Ever seen a defunct car brand and wish you could have it in your garage? Well, we sometimes have those nostalgic moments too. I'm Glenn and we're bringing you our list of 15 cars from the 80s that will have you wishing you could turn back time. Number 15. Designed by Dennis Adams and presented by Glenn Fromm Engineering at the 1983 Motor Fair in London, the Facet quickly became the rave of the 80s. Built on the original Rover chassis, the Facet sported a manually detachable Targa roof, which left the windscreen separate and supported with a cast aluminum frame. Shaped like an anvil with a hydroelectrically lifted top and a four-wheel drive, it was a guaranteed choice for serious off-roading. With a headlamp borrowed from Vauxhall and its dashboard designed with laminated burlwood veneer, the Facet was tagged as ultra-futuristic and priced at just under 89000 in 1983, an arm and a leg for too many of its admirers. Number 14. Unveiled in 1989, the Ford Probe 4 was sold as a sporty coupe with a rear-drive chassis powered by a 1.6-liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine. Built to replace the Ford Mustang in the North American market, the Probe 4 was immediately noticeable with a modern styling that was attractive yet practical. With a sleek body made of fiberglass and headlights under plastic covers, the four-door coupe was designed with a more aerodynamic shape and a low ride height that gave the car more air penetration and better speed stability. However, the Probe 4 wasn't affordable for its market, disappointedly, selling just over 800,000 units in its eight years of production. Number 13. With a change in focus from petrol vehicles, the Itaipu E400 electric van was launched in 1980. Styled as a medium-sized pickup, the Itaipu E400 measured 12 and a half feet in length and weighed 3,240 pounds. The vehicle was powered by eight batteries with an average range of 56 miles and a maximum speed of 44 miles per hour. The E400, like most pickups its size, adapted a single four-seater row behind the driver's seat and was able to transport up to six people. Although the operating costs were about 40% lower than that of petrol vehicles, early users noticed that the range was less than advertised. This, along with a burdened economy, led to its demise. Number 12. The Pontiac Stinger Sport Utility Car was launched with a lot of fanfare and buzz as it was targeted at the younger, trendy generation. The four-seater vehicle featured one door on each side and an open roof that suggested a fun, exciting ride. The Stinger, though lightweight, had a sturdy build and a modern suspension system designed to handle serious off-roading. But the car was not built to last, as the cheap materials used in the panels came off easily, proving that the Stinger model was only good in theory. Number 11. Launched in 1980 at the Turin Motor Show in Italy, the Lamborghini Athon was a 3-liter V8 with a 5-speed manual gearbox. With a mid-engine design, the car featured a long rear deck, an open roof, and no back seat. Weighing around 2,400 pounds and able to reach a maximum speed of 170 miles per hour, the Lamborghini Athon was available at a premium price of $487,000. Even though it had an influential design and was featured in several movies, the Lamborghini Athon ended up as a museum display after the company went bankrupt. Number 10. The Suzuki Mighty Boy was a coupe utility commercial vehicle styled as a small-sized pickup that was sold in Japan from 1983 to 1988. Powered by a three-cylinder engine and a four-speed manual gearbox, the car was able to achieve a speed of 75 miles per hour. With only two sliding and reclining seats, the Mighty Boy offered just enough space for luggage behind the seats and in the trunk making it a good fit for small-scale commercial hauling. 
Fortunately, the shortcoming made other larger trucks the preferable choice, and left the Mighty Boy as more of a personal vehicle. Number 9 Unveiled at the Chicago Auto Show in 1983, the Buick Questor was General Motors' model of a computerized car with most of the car's integral functions controlled by 14 microcomputers. Featuring a specially programmed laser key system, automatic adjusting light-sensitive windshield, a navigation map, and self-adjusting rear spoiler, it was touted as the car of the future. It also had no exterior door handles or side mirrors. Interestingly, the vehicle was programmed to nosedive at 25 miles an hour in order to achieve better fuel economy and aerodynamics. Number 8 Unveiled at the Tokyo Motor Show in 1983, the Nissan NX21 was a four-seat coupe touted as the family car of the future. Powered by an efficient two-shaft gas turbine engine, it could be fueled with gas, diesel, light oil, alcohol, or kerosene. With side doors that opened upwards, the NX21 featured a flat top and wedge-shaped front lamps, which showed its excellent aerodynamic build. On the inside, a modern instrument panel was equipped with high-tech gadgets like a rear-view projection screen and programmed vocal driving instructions. Number 7 The first impression you get from the GMC Centaur is the speedboat-styled body. Designed like an open-back wagon, the five-seater was an all-wheel drive hybrid car truck with a three-liter, six-cylinder engine, a manual suspension system, and a five-speed automatic transmission. As a 4x4 vehicle, the Centaur was ideal for off-road excursions, with the load bed boasting a payload capacity of 2,000 pounds and the vehicle able to tow up to a 5,000-pound trailer. Number 6 This next entry was unveiled in 1989 at the International Motor Show in Frankfurt as a gullwing-doored sedan modeled after the Mercedes-Benz 300 CE. It was designed by modifying a Mercedes 300 CE and merging it with the nose of an R129 SL-class Mercedes. Very few were produced, however, with most being non-gullwing type. It was overpriced at the time having a cost of about 165,000 Deutschmarks, or an equivalent of $97,000 in 1990. Number 5 The electric commuter car, which was nicknamed the Cheese Wedge and sold between 1979 to 1982, was way ahead of its time. Weighing 1,250 pounds and spanning 8 feet in length, this two-seat EV offered a compact, low-cost car with a decent speed of 40 miles per hour and a range of up to 50 miles. Made out of DOT-approved safety cages and layered with a plastic skin, it featured sliding windows, protruding bumpers, a 6-horsepower motor, and 8 6-volt batteries to keep it going. With claims that it was the biggest selling battery powered car before the Tesla S, you would wonder why just 5,000 units were produced. Number 4 Designed to showcase Wolf Race's new range of Sonic alloys, the Sonic was a two seat race car powered by two Rover V8 engines and a high performance drive by wire control system. Built on a space frame chassis, the car was lightweight yet sturdy and balanced. The wheel configuration was similar to that of a 1977 Panther 6 with four smaller tires at the front and two larger ones at the rear. The body of the Sonic was designed to have a forward tilting torso and electric controlled headlights shielded in plastic covers. Sadly, only two units were eventually built. Number three. Launched in 1981 at the Chicago Auto Show, the Bronco Montana Lobo was a two-passenger SUV built on the 1977 Ford Bronco chassis and powered by a 5-liter V8 engine. The 4x4 off-road vehicle had a T-top roof and two removable plexiglass bubble doors 
that unveiled its ventilated seats and digital dashboard. The loading bed, which was equipped with a retractable loading ramp and side storage compartments, was cushioned with hemp fabric upholstery. Furnished with two foldable bench seats along each side of the bed, they could be accessed from the cabin through a patio-style glass door dividing both compartments. Even though the Montana Lobo was one of the best-equipped SUVs at the time, the production was discontinued as newer models came on the market. Number 2 Unveiled at the Chicago Auto Show, the Mercury Anster was a four-passenger wedge-shaped concept car with a lightweight aerodynamic design that is powered by a 1,200-pound electric hybrid system. Considered a futuristic car, Anster featured high-tech gadgets such as a computerized display map for detours and alternate routes, as well as an all-digital dashboard. The two sliding doors on both sides gave an elegant look and allowed packing in narrow spaces. With batteries powering the electric motors on all four wheels, it was equipped with a small generator that charged the batteries on the go. But just like other futuristic car models, the market just wasn't ready for the Anster at the time. Number 1 The Bronco DM1 was a four-wheel drive SUV designed by an industrial arts student named Derek Millsap, hence the suffix DM1. Styled with a bulging build and a body made of steel-reinforced fiberglass, this five-passenger vehicle was compatible with the 4x4 setup of the Bronco 2 model and was built on the Ford Escort chassis with 17-inch wheels and tires for all terrains. The interior featured a digital driver's display with an early version of a GPS-based satellite navigation system installed. For convenience, the front seats were adjustable in six different ways, while the rear bench was foldable to provide more cargo space when needed. The DM prototype was a good one, but production plans have long been shelved. Though some of these cars were only good on paper, if some become reality today, it's almost guaranteed that heads would turn on the highway. We can only wish and hope that maybe the companies have a change of heart and bring some of them back. Hey guys, this is Cassie. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Tell us in the comments below what you found to be the most interesting and why. Also, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.